Okay, so the next suture we're going to demonstrate is the subcuticular suture, which is the commonest way plastic surgeons close the wound. And this shows a typical example of what would happen ordinarily in a normal wound. I've put interrupted deep sutures in that's brought the dermis together. And so this skin closure now is no longer under any tension. And the subcuticular runs just below uh, into the dermis and begins initially with a securing stitch, um, which is usually on the far side away from you. It doesn't have to be a big bite, but it has to be in that dermis. And the dermis is a little bit thinner here than it would be in normal life, and it's more like a 80-year-old's dermis, which is always a challenge to close rather than a young person. So if you can get the stitch in there, you're doing fine. And again, you cut the short end. Thank you. And when you've done that, just always make sure that it's secure, so it's not, they're not, it's not going to come undone. And the suture then will proceed in essentially in a horizontal mattress fashion, and they have to be square. So you grab, you must stay in this dermal layer, which is this white layer, shown beautifully on this model, and essentially pull through, and you can pull it through every time, or you can pull it through one the, at the end, but generally because this is a braided suture, the silk you tend to wool, tend to pull it through as you go along, otherwise you find it's difficult to pull through. So again, taking square bites. Now, the key thing here, as the thing that often I get asked is, well, where do you put the next stitch? Where should the next stitch sit? And the next bite on my side really should begin just a little bit behind where the suture is sitting. So, what we're talking about is that the next bite really should not be here, otherwise the wound won't close. The next bite needs to be behind where that suture is coming out. So the next bite will sit there, and again, taking equal bites like you have done with the previous one. And again, as you get going, you understand where the bites are. And here now, to get this wound closed, I don't want to be ahead of that point. I need to be a bit behind of that point. And so, the bite is not doesn't begin there the bite begins behind the last suture so just so I need to hold this toggling a little bit Alternately, we don't need to close that and that's where it needs to be so when you go to pull the through This will close the skin, and I've called a little bit in front as I try not to demonstrate that. And you can see the skin hasn't closed very well, so the next bite I need to go back. And here I need to start behind where that's coming out, and that's a much better bite. And you can see how much better the skin's coming together. And the closure essentially proceeds in this manner. Don't worry if you struggle with this exercise a little bit, the dermis is a little bit thin here. The kit is not perhaps not as good as you would get in theatre, but that's the principle in terms of closing it. What you should be getting is a wound closure, something like that. Now, for the sake of actually demonstrating the end, once you've gone through, the knot will then have to finish off. And again, you tend to finish off on the opposite side too, because that's easier to see, um, and essentially involves taking a bite as in close to the corner as you can. And this then usually finishes what's called an Aberdeen knot, and this may be difficult to demonstrate, but essentially you have to grab the knot between your thumb and forefinger. With your forefinger you grab the suture and you pull that through. Sorry, that's just torn out, it's difficult to demonstrate. We'll do that maybe perhaps at the end. Okay, so we're gonna demonstrate the subcuticular stitch again. Um, just talking about where hand should be, how the wound should run. Really, the wound should be running at 90 degrees to your hand, so that's the natural way of closing the wound. Any other way makes the closure much more difficult, so you should be square onto the patient. Now, as we talked in the last, the subcuticular normally starts with a first stitch that holds the suture in and essentially is pretty much like your horizontal mattress up there 
And again, don't worry, this is slightly more difficult in real life because the dermis would ordinarily be much thicker than that. So it's much easier to grab that white dermis, but you should try to get in that plane. We just put a single knot in there so there's not too much knot material at the end. Okay, I'll get the assistant to cut that short for me. Thank you. And then really, as we talked about before, the closure has to go in a horizontal fashion. Try to stay in this white dermal layer. And the next stitch must be slightly behind where the last stitch comes out on the opposite side. And it's a little bit difficult on here because that term is said is very thin. So it's here. So what I don't want to do is to be ahead of that. I want to be behind that suture. Thank you. Thank you. And having an assistant actually is crucial for doing running sutures. And again slightly behind you might find your needle toggles a little bit in these needle holders so you must just try to stay in this white dermal layer and again trying to concentrate on supinating your hand and not trying to push it through so you can see that we're getting a slightly zigzag appearance to the suture line. It shouldn't be square, it should be slightly zigzagging like I'm showing because the next stitch is slightly behind the other. And here it is, and I'm going to pull it through. And that closes the wound. And that's exactly how it should be in real life, where there's no gaps between the skin. This is a good primary closure because there's literally no gapping and the closure will then continue and we'll close it off as I demonstrated in the last one with an Aberdeen knot at the end.